But the big story that's taking place today, and that of course is the Southern Africa Development Community, that SADC will hold an extraordinary Troika Summit meeting in Maputo, Mozambique, to deliberate on measures to address terrorism in the host country. So, um, the, the, this meeting, of course, after insurgents attacked the strategic town of Palma last month, and the country has, after that, seen continued terrorist attacks in the Cabo Delgado province over the past few weeks, leaving many people dead or injured. And I believe um, uh, there has now been evidence of child soldiers also being used here. All right, so let's get more on this. And uh, we speak to SABC foreign editor Sophie McQuenna. Sophie, good morning to you. Talk to us about the latest in that particular region. What we do know is that uh, uh, the military was able to uh, take over the coastal city of uh, Palma. We know that uh, the insurgents have retreated. It's not clear where. But uh, we suspect that they've gone to neighboring countries because the area is uh, near the Tanzania border. You also have South Africa on this side, that is um, Bumalanga province. And the president of Mozambique a day ago indicated that they have indicated to the international community what kind of assistance they will uh, need from the international community, but emphasizing or stressing the fact that at the end of the day, it is Mozambique and the military in Mozambique who must resolve the standoff. So Sadek Troika is expected to meet tomorrow and, uh, I beg your pardon, today. It's all starting today and tomorrow as well. What are we likely to actually get out of these meetings? Actually, the Sadek Troika technical meeting started yesterday with ministers and heads of the Department of Defense, uh, Department of uh, International Relations or Foreign Affairs, and also the uh, intelligence do, do, dealing with the issue of the uh, program today and also perhaps proposal that will be presented before heads of state today. The heads of state meeting gets underway today. It will end today. We expect the communicate today that will give an indication in terms of uh, the action that is going to be taken by the SADC uh, region. Mm. You know, one of the, the, the big criti the, the criticisms that the organization has faced is that they've had a very, very slow reaction to the problems in the area. Um, do, do you think this is a, a fair assessment? Indeed, it is a fair assessment. I mean, for the last past 10 days, I have been uh, indicating or communicating on social media that I don't understand why SADC is not acting. Because when you look at the problem of Cabo Delgado, it is not a problem that started two weeks ago with the recent attacks in Palma. But it has been there. And we know that because of the proximity with Malawi, Zimbabwe, Tanzania, and South Africa, it was expected that SADC will have a proper meeting where they can discuss this matter. But unfortunately, the current chair, Mozambique, is not willing you know, to come up with information. They've been in denial. Even now, them announcing that uh, they have recaptured Palma. Other people are saying, or some people are saying, that perhaps they were preempting the meeting of the Troika, resisting uh, maybe military intervention, because they don't want to be seen as a weak uh, country in the region. And you know, the, the issue of uh, background plays a very important role. You can imagine the country that played a prominent role to liberate the uh, SADC region. And now, all of a sudden, it's weak, and it has to be assisted by the very same countries that they liberated, you know, the frontline state, uh, the battle they engaged in to liberate the entire southern region. Yeah. And therefore, it is not clear whether it is indeed uh, uh, correct to say the relative peace now. And we know that Tanzania is firm to say that uh, something must be done because it is a border between Tanzania and Mozambique, and uh, sometimes these people cross over to Mozambique, and it will be a security problem for Z Mozambique, if it, for Tanzania. If it becomes a problem for Tanzania, even East Africa region will have a problem, because Tanzania is also part of East Africa region, you know, Somalia, Kenya, you might experience similar 
uh, problems. Mm -hmm. I mean, why, why do you think that Mozambique has actually not asked for assistance from other countries at this stage? It doesn't want to be seen as a weak country. You know that the issue of uh, uh, independence and strength of countries sometimes uh, leads to a situation where a head of state feels that I can handle these are internal challenges. I'll be able to deal with these challenges. That's the reason, nothing mm. else. But two, there are issues of corruption around this multi-billion project and other projects in that area because you have uh, uh, the, the, the mineral resources beneath the soil, the rubies. You also have uh, the oil. And therefore, people think that if you go there and you are able to see as a neighbor or an enemy what is happening there, you are likely to take advantage of, you know, investing in that country and at the end of the day, not really uh, paying back or uh, assisting the area itself. And, you know, sometimes uh, politicians can be politicians. We are dealing with a huge crisis of corruption in this country. And you can't rule out similar corruption in other countries. We know that what's happening. There are lots of cases currently internationally, and there are people who are supposed to be uh, sent to the United States of America to account during the previous Mozambique administration. Therefore, the issue of corruption cannot be ruled out. And the multinational companies, they are like that. When there's conflict, for them sometimes it's better because no one is able to hold people accountable in terms of revenue and uh, taxes that they are supposed to pay. And they are able also to, 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 to downplay prices when we talk about, about illicit financial flow out of Africa. They happen in a situation yeah. like the one that is currently prevailing in Cabo Delgado. Just fi finally, uh, Sophie, as we, we, we head into the news, but just very quickly an update. I mean, we know that President Ramaphosa has already announced South Africa is sending soldiers to the area to rescue South Africans who are stranded there. Uh, do we have information about the, the, the deployment, the number, their mission? Any, any updates on it? It is not a deployment, as you pointed out. It is just to assist South Africans who are there. Okay. And therefore, you don't expect the troops on the ground uh, fighting side by side with the Mozambique government, uh, military. No. It is technical expertise and specialized forces within the South African Defense Force. For an example, the Air Force. Because when you talk of airlifting people, you need the Air Force expertise. They are the ones who can uh, uh, use helicopters and, and, and planes to take out uh, South African citizens in that country. But definitely you will have a few number of uh, uh, the, the, the soldiers boots on the ground to give protection while the whole airlifting is, is done. You may also have the Navy maybe uh, moving around that uh, uh, coast to ensure that there's protection because we are told that the attackers are also using the coast to bring in um, military weapons. And therefore, that, that, that's the kind of expertise you expect South Africa to use in that circumstances. But also the medical uh, team of South Africa, clearly, to ensure that these people are well. And also during this time of pandemic, you'll also bring in the health department to check these South Africans on arrival in the country, even before they leave, to check mm. whether they don't have uh, COVID-19. Therefore, it is just specialized expertise from different units of the Defense Force. It's not, it is not deployment of the troops on the ground to fight side by side with Mozambique military. All right, Sophie, let's leave it there. Thanks so much for the update uh, on what's happening in Mozambique there. So our foreign editor, uh, Sophie McCoy. Let's get into our news.